Okay, well tonight I'm going to cover some basics of uh, cast load bullet development. What's a little unique about this particular load is there is no published data for it. Um, I'm also using a military surplus pull down powder. So it's a, uh, first of all, I'm going to put on my safety glasses here. That's probably the most important thing to have on when you are reloading. Remember, you're literally working with explosives. You know, we have. Um, small rifle uh, primers here and it says danger highly explosive so there you go um, this is military surplus pull down powder so this was um, I don't yeah this is pull down so they deconstructed military rounds um, this this particular one sometimes it's commercial rounds and they recycle the components so it's at a very steep discount compared to your commercial powders that you go you you go buy. And I'm using cast bullets here, so the most expensive part was the mold, which is um, you know paid down every time you use it. And um, the gas checks are the second. They're three to four cents a piece. These particular ones are co copper gas checks. This is a um, 200 grain uh, 308 caliber, uh, Lyman bullet mold and uh, we are going to reload for 300 blackout today so 300 blackout for those who don't know what that is it is a 223 that is chopped off uh, so it's made shorter and then it's necked up from the 223 it's actually 224 bullet diameter um, and it's necked up to fit a 308 caliber bullet so it ends up being a very top heavy bullet. So here is a loaded round from earlier. And the primary purpose of this round is to shoot subsonic. So if you're trying to be a good neighbor and you, you live in a relatively urban area, but you're allowed to shoot and you don't want to be loud, that's one thing. Um, if you want to hunt and uh, you know you, you want to shoot with a silencer, it's a, uh, you know, best to shoot a subsonic round that, to really capitalize on that sound reduction, reducing that report of the firearm. So one of the challenges right now, as most folks know, and, and just more generally, if you like to shoot a lot, is the cost and the expense. So that's one reason to get into reloading. Um, when you start casting your own bullets, that further reduces the price. Um, jacketed bullets for a uh, 308 diameter right now are probably, if you can even get them, are on the low end, probably 35 cents a piece. Uh, I can cast these for the cost of the gas check and um, you know that's four cents a piece. So that dramatically reduces the price. You reuse your brass, so if you can find it in the grass, um, you know you reuse your brass so that capital cost comes down. Then you use a surplus powder and that further brings the price down. So I'm probably reloading these for um, you know, the full loaded round for 18 cents a piece, maybe tops, uh, probably less than that actually. It's probably, you know, 15 cents or less. So there's a huge cost benefit when you consider that a commercially loaded round right now runs $1.36 to $2 a round if you can find it. Um, so you can get a lot more practice in and enjoy the sport a whole lot more if you reload. But getting into, well, how do you develop a load if there's no published recipe or published load data. Um, well, first thing to do is check for published load data. And the holy grail of cast bullet load data is the Lyman cast bullet handbook. And you know, lo and behold, you flip through here and you go to the 30 calibers and 30 out six and 300 H and H meg. Well, there's no 300 blackout. So where do you go? Uh, my methodology is to find published load data for a jacketed bullet. Now, because we don't have a um, production powder, we have to find something with a similar burn rate. And this particular supplier said, hey, the burn rate is similar to H110, and their recommendation is to reduce by 10% the minimum load um, uh, amount or, or quantity, in this case, the weight, the grains, uh, by 10% of H110. So if I look here, I find a 200 grain bullet. We've got a 200 grain bullet, um, all else being equal, which it's not, we'll get into that. You can see H110, of course you can't see that, it's impossible, but just imagine. All right, so H110, the starting weight is 10.7 grains. 
and that'll achieve about 1100 feet per second. 1100 feet per second is um, more than doable for a, a lead jacketed bullet, uh, or pardon me, a lead or powder coated lead bullet. Um, it, if you start really increasing velocity, what you'll start running into is problems with uh, a, a unjacketed, a lead or even a powder coated bullet um, being able to handle um, those velocities. And so you generally wanna be more conservative and run your lead bullets, your cast lead bullets at a lower velocity. And that will vary depending on um, the, the bullet's uh, diameter. Diameter is absolutely critical to reduce leading. You wanna make sure that you're about one to two thousandths over the bore diameter. So if you're running a 308, you want to, you know, a 308 um, bore, you want to run about a 309 to a 310 diameter cast bullet. In this particular case, these bullets um, drop about 309 to 310. I do run them through a sizer, a Luber sizer. I also powder coat them, but this is just what I had laying on the bench. Um, and so that's perfectly fine. 1,100 feet per second, not a problem to run 1,100 feet per second in a, in a lead bullet. And um, on the max end, this is 13.2 grains at 1,350 per second. 1,350 per feet per second, in my experience, you will very rarely get your peak accuracy, especially with cast running at, at your max velocity. So it's it, it's totally fine to start on the, the low end, um, you know, it, trying to achieve accuracy, but more importantly, for safety reasons. So I actually did some homework. I did some, some load development before shooting this video. And I started out um, actually quite a bit lower, uh, more conservatively, I grabbed my notes. Uh, one other thing you, you absolutely need to have if you're a reloader is a, a, your own notebook. And so in here is where I keep all my recipes and notes. Um, this was a scratch sheet. <laughs> Um, and, uh, let's see, I started as low as 8.4 grains of powder. Where you want to be careful is you don't want to start too low. Um, I felt comfortable with this, but if you start about 10% lower and then start working yourself, your way up, um, using H110 as your, your starting point, your guide, and then 10% below that minimum load, you'll be fine. Um, the... Uh, yeah, let's see. The, the loads I used today, I got up to, it looks like 9.4 grains. And I, I loaded one at a time. I was firing out of a semi-automatic. And the first round, it the bolt held back um, on the magazine catch. And the second one, it the bolt did not return um, fully to its rearward position. And... Um, the, the bolt actually closed, so it didn't hold open. So that tells me I'm probably still a little bit light on the powder charge. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up some at that 9.4, and then I'm gonna step up to 9.5, and then maybe 9.6 grains. And one of the tools that's very helpful when you're doing this type of load development is a chronograph. Some people call them a chromie. There, there's um, a couple different versions on the market. Um, I use a Caldwell. There's nothing wrong with, with pretty much any of them. Um, the, uh, that device, it measures the velocity. And there's a couple things that uh, it does for you. It'll do velocity and then help you determine your standard deviation. So you want to have a very low standard deviation. That means all of the velocities are very, very close to one another. And that, that's telling us that we've got a lot of consistency in the combustion of that powder and uh, that tends to lend itself towards accuracy. In this particular setup, this is a fairly close range cartridge. It's not uh, intended to, to shoot long distance. If I were gonna shoot long distance with this, I would use a jacketed bullet, um, probably a, uh, uh, you know, uh, a high-end match grade bullet. That's not really what this cartridge was designed for. So what my intention is uh, with the cast bullets is um, a safe plinking load that functions reliably so I can get practice. That, that's really what this, this load is for. So if I can shoot two and a half to three MOA, um, that's gonna be fine for plinking at 50 yards at a pie plate. And so that's all I'm really trying to achieve here. But um, let me get into a little bit about um, the basics of reloading. There's lots of other videos out there that do that. 
this is a um, unprimed, fully formed, fully prepped piece of brass. So it has been uh, purchased outright. I cheated this time. Uh, I didn't feel like cutting down my own 223 brass, so I went and I bought some brass from Top Brass. They are a new manufacturer. I will say uh, the concentricity of the um, of the shoulders is definitely lacking. However, it really hasn't lent to any um, reliability issues in chambering. So, um, you know, it's an observation. It didn't really seem to affect the function. But what I did do is I did run all of these back through my sizing die and I trimmed them all to length because I, I was getting some inconsistencies in uh, the height of the brass from one side to the other side. So I trimmed them all flush and then I deburred them, which means on the inside and outside of the case mouth, I took any of the sharp edges off. Um, the next you know, aspect of this particular brass that went into the brass prep is they swaged the primer pocket. So this was all military surplus uh, brass. And so it had a crimped primer and that's for reliability and, and a requirement for mil spec. Um, for commercial reloaders, we dread it because it means we have to do one more case prep um, step, and that's to either ream it out or to swage it, and swaging is physically deforma a, a physical deformation of the material. Um, so these particular ones are all prepped and ready to go. Uh, the next uh, component is the primer. So they make all kinds of primers. They, uh, they've got small rifle, large rifle, small pistol, large pistol. They've got magnums, they've got bench rest primers, and then there's um, a plethora of other, um, you know, nuances depending on manufacturer and, and application. But those are the, the basics. And this will get pressed into that brass. And then we have the powder, which we talked about a little bit. This is a powder drop. So this particular powder is what they call a ball type powder. So it's a very fine grain ball powder. Then they have flake um, powder, which is, um, imagine like a tiny cornflake. And then they have um, extruded powders. This particular powder drop works very, very well with ball style powders, which we're using here tonight. It doesn't do a great job with flake powders and um, it does an even worse job with extruded powders. The extruded powders, it has to cut those grains and it just doesn't drop reliably. So um, I, I either go to a different powder drop or I just use this device over here, which I'll have to move the camera a little bit. This is a um, all-in-one digital scale and, and powder measure. So there's a hopper here. It can feed out your desired powder charge. We're gonna only use that tonight to validate our powder charges. So we'll use the powder drop, and then if we need to add a little bit more powder, then um, you know we'll just trickle a little bit in there. But I'm only gonna go through loading one round. I'm not gonna bore you with all the other details, uh, but we will go through this step by step so folks can kind of see what the process looks like. So we're gonna take an empty case, which we've already said we've prepped. We're gonna take a small rifle primer. We're gonna put it here in this cup. Then, we're gonna put our bullet into the case holder. So that goes right around the rim. And we are gonna pull this lever up, which actually presses that primer down into the case. And you'll you wanna notice that is perfectly flush. Sometimes you just wanna take your finger across it or just visually inspect it. It's very important that that primer be flush for safety reasons, depending on the, uh, the firearm. You don't wanna get a uh, uh, a primer strike on there because it's sitting a little proud, a little uh, bit above the the base of the case. And then um, also for reliability because the in, in some cases with very hard uh, primer cups, it may actually press in the uh, case a little bit. But jamming is, is probably the biggest thing that I see when you don't have, um, you know, you don't have that primer fully seated. So it's really important to watch for that. It's just part of the, the process. You don't want distractions. You don't want to have the TV on. You don't want to, you don't want to be shooting a video generally. But um, you know, just uh, safety is the number one thing to, to keep in mind when you're doing this type of work. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to measure out our powder charge. And we're going to use the um, powder drop here. 
So we've got our powder. You can see it's a very fine grain powder. Almost spilled some of it there. I'm gonna put it down in here and you can trust me, um, but it's 9.4, it's bouncing up to 9.5. So the uh, very consistent, it's usually within a 10th of a grain or less with this particular powder drop. The finer the, granula, the granulation of that ball type powder, the, the more accurate this particular one seems to, to be. So we're gonna take our primed piece of brass. We're gonna take this funnel. This funnel is the, probably one of the best purchases I've ever made. And I'm gonna put that in there, make sure all the powder drops down in there. And now, the next step is unique to cast bullets. Um, one of the things we have to do is we have to actually flare the case mouth because the lead we're using is much softer than a jacketed bullet, so a copper jacketed bullet. And um, what we wanna do is we wanna open that case mouth so when the bullet comes down, it doesn't shave the lead off the side. And it also can help ensure that it's concentric as it presses down into that case. So we're going to pick out our bullet here, and we're going to go, oh, picked out my bullet, but I didn't flare it yet. So we're going to bell this case mouth, and it might be a little difficult to see, but we're going to try. So this case mouth is actually a little bit wider than this one over here that we haven't belled out. I think you can see that on there. I like to use turret presses or single stage when I am doing um, load development. There's a lot more control, things are slowed down, so a lot less error or opportunity for error. If you want to load fast, you know, something like a progressive press like, you know, Hornady, Lee, or, you know, on the higher end, Dylan, some others. Uh, but for this type of work, I find a turret press is, is best. That's my preference. So we've got our primer, we've got our brass, we flared flared open or belled our case mouth, and now we're gonna set our bullet in there. And one of the things that I wanna talk about here a little bit is bullet seating depth. So all of your published load data will have load or, or bullet seating depth. As you push the bullet further down in the case, especially when you have um, <coughs> fast burning powders, you can have dramatically uh, or, or the pressure in that um, combustion can increase uh, dramatically. It, it's basically a pressure vessel. And there, the opposite can actually be true as well if you seed it out too far and you actually press the bullet against the lands as, um, you know, as it ignites, it's now got, you know, that, <clears throat> that extra uh, pressure against it as it's trying to turn itself into the, into the rifling. So making sure that you're off the lands is important. And then, <coughs> pardon me, then also having, um, making sure that you're not setting it too deep that would result in some kind of pressure spike is important as well. So where do you start? Um, so I typically start, um, you know, about 20 to 30 thousandths off the, off the lands uh, when I'm doing something and I'm, you know, I are doing a new load development and I don't have experience with, with a, a similar uh, bullet and then you can start working yourself down now let's say you find your ideal powder charge and then you want to push that bullet back further and further deeper and deeper um, time out you have to start backing your powder charge back down to be safe and then once you find that that ideal depth then work your way back up to uh, a safe uh, powder charge because it will increase that that pressure with this all else being equal holding that same powder charge. So very important watch out there for folks who, who are gonna try to do this kind of stuff. Um, so we've got our bullet, it's, it's seated, and we're gonna go ahead to the next step, which is crimping. So because we belled out that case mouth, now we gotta close the case mouth back down so that we have a uniform diameter. So we're gonna go ahead and put it into this crimping die and push it down, and I could feel it crimp, um, pull the, uh, or actually press the back brass back down around uh, to get a nice uniform, um, concentric um, uh, 
case mount there. So let's see, anything else worth mentioning here? Um, that's probably the basics. There's a lot of things I probably missed. I've been doing this for um, 25 years or more. So I, I, I'll, the one thing I'll tell you that I've learned along the way is, you know, never stop learning. You know, I'm still buying books and looking at resources. But uh, if folks have any questions, feel free to comment below with your questions or, um, you know, hit me up on uh, social media. I uh, just want to thank you for your time and be safe out there. Make sure you wear, wear your safety glasses. Be conservative with your loads and, uh, uh, you know, be nice to everybody. Take care.